Hello FPL managers and welcome back for another video. My name is Jack and today we're discussing our trend for sort of plans coming into game week 24. There is a fair bit to discuss as well as I am going to go with my chip strategy to try and navigate the blank and double game weeks coming out. And you guys can kind of see my transfer thoughts, not only for this week, but across the next three or so weeks to try and uh, get past a double and blank game week 25, then navigate the biggest blank game week of the season in game week 28, whilst also trying to prioritize doubles now advanced in game week 27, plus some other potential blanks in game week 32 and also doubles coming up as well. So if you guys are looking or liking, sorry, the FPL content, drop a like and subscribe because it does help out the channel. Also click that notification bell as well, there's going to be lots more FPL videos coming up in the build up to all these blanks and doubles to end the season. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. So here is currently how the team is looking uh, so far in game week 23. It's been a pretty decent week for us up to this point. In goals, Ramsdale couldn't provide anything though, and neither could the rest of the defenders with White, Trippier, and Akanji all blanking in their fixtures so far this week. Obviously, Ben White and Akanji saw that fixture against each other, but I'm not sure if there's going to be a clean sheet either way in this game, so not a massive amount of hope for returns at the back for both uh, White and Akanji, and also Ramsdale as well in goals for Arsenal. Maybe he could pick up some save bonus points but I don't necessarily fancy either team for a clean sheet in this game and it's actually going to be a great game to watch I'm really looking forward to this game looking to the midfielders though there was a bit more success as the decision to start Andreas Pereira definitely did pay off as would have been in a world of pain if we did opt to start Martinez who despite getting benched uh, for Manchester United against Leeds actually came on for the last portion of the game so that would have definitely been a frustrating watch had Martinez been listed as starting and Andreas positioned on the bench so definitely very happy that I opted to start Andreas Pereira as that would have been five points missed out on if he was sitting on the bench there. So good to see him get himself an assist as he does continue some pretty decent home form for Fulham. And of course, Marcus Rashford got his customary goal, it seems like at the minute. He's been in such excellent form for Manchester United. And it was a shame that Bruno Fernandes did miss out in that same game. I couldn't say he didn't uh, have chances as he had lots of opportunities to score against Leeds. Mainly a very good one-on-one -on -one chance right at the end of the first half. Definitely should have finished that one but uh, nonetheless I'm still uh, happy to have Fernandes and the team coming to game week 24 as he's shown that he's getting uh, into some good positions he continues to get chances and he could have easily had a big hole in the game week 23 but just not quite to be this week. Also, Martin Odegaard, his form has slightly dropped off in terms of goals and assists output over the last two to three weeks, but of course, he still has the second fixture against Manchester City in the double game week, and he's definitely a player that I'm not looking to get rid of from the team right now, and also a player that I wouldn't be looking to side uh, side grade to Saka, as I think he still uh, can match Saka for points, even though Saka has outperformed him in the last couple of weeks with some attacking returns. I still think Odegaard is just as good a pick at a little bit cheaper as well and the decision to go for Mares over De Bruyne was also a massive one as we were, uh, we were a massive fan of De Bruyne coming into game week 23 and he was the main player that we were looking to get in in place of Fernandez. but the move we did end up making was March to Mares. obviously March got himself a goal and got 10 points but the move to go for Mares has actually paid off as Mares has already outperformed him at this week with 12 points in his first game plus still has that second fixture I'm interested to see what his minutes are going to be like not only in this fixture but also the Champions League as well as it is going to be interesting to see how Pep navigates the busy fixture schedule and how he prioritizes his team with whether he wants it for the Premier League stronger or the Champions League as well. But right now, very happy that I did bring in Mares for March, as despite March getting 10 points, Mares still has been very, very good. Obviously, it would have been more beneficial to go for Mares in for Fernandez and then start March, but that probably wouldn't have been the case as March was already on our bench anyway for this week, just considering that we had six double gaming players plus a couple of other good players with good single game fixtures. The main, uh, if I did have March on the team, the only player that I probably would have started him over was Andreas Pereira, who still got six points anyway. So really much of a Marchness in the end. And Erling Haaland on captaincy did get himself four points, doubled up to eight, but he does have a slight injury concern there coming off at halftime for Man City. So that could also provide some frustration. And it would be interesting to see if this is a longer-term injury or just a short-term injury. 
as this could actually see an Erling Haaland transfer out of the team if he's out for an extended period of time. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious, though, and it definitely would be quite intriguing to see how FPL managers play it if Erling Haaland did have a prolonged period out of the game. Who would people go for? How would they spend the extra funds around the team? That would be something definitely worthwhile thinking about. And then Harry Kane also just produced the two points here. Disappointing to see him not get himself a goal against the fairly weak Leicester defence. Couldn't get the job done. And then looking at the players on the bench, all three outfield players just produced one point with Martinez, Bamford and Bueno all blanking. And Olsen did get zero points. So, so far in game week 23, we are on 48 points. We didn't have to take any hits as well, which is a good thing as well. So 48 points. The centre stack a slight a green arrow up to 985k. Obviously, with a lot of more, a lot more fixtures still to play, I am hopeful for an even bigger green arrow. As of course, we still have six uh, fixtures left to be played in the team, assuming everyone does play full, uh, at least 60 minutes. So a decent week so far. Definitely some room for improvement. I'll discuss a couple of plays that we're looking to get out of the team and how we're going to navigate the upcoming blank and double game weeks. So a bit frustrating that we did have Martinez instead of Shaw this week as Shaw did produce a massive double-digit haul with an assist, a clean shoot and triple bonus points whereas Martinez just got the one and was sitting on our bench anyway. So he's definitely a player that we're looking to get out of the squad especially considering that Manchester United do blank in game week 25 plus have a decent possibility of blanking in future game weeks as well. So uh, he's a player definitely on the chopping block this week and my favourite replacement for him right now is Max Kilman. He's coming in at 4.3, so it does save us an extra 0.2 on Martinez's price right now. And with a 2.4% ownership, I think he could be a great differential to have in the team, especially since he does double in game week 25 and has good fixtures around this double game week as well. Uh, he's got Bournemouth at home here in Game Week 24, so he's going to be a strong starting option to have in the side for Game Week 24 if we do opt to bring Kilman into the team. And with Wolves' defence looking a lot more solid recently under Lopetegui as well, I am hopeful for even more clean sheets for Max Kilman as he's already put up six this season, which he has accompanied with an assist. Uh, it is key to note that also Wolves face the other two promoted sides across the next five game weeks, and not including uh, this fixture and of course a double in Game Week 25 as well. So they definitely definitely do have good fixtures coming up across the next six or so weeks and Max Kilman's a player that I do want to hop on at 4.3 he hasn't missed a minute this season for Wolves he's been starting all their games and I don't see why this would change even in the double game week as well the good thing is, obviously, Wolves don't have as quite a busy fixture schedule as other teams as they are out of a few cup competitions, so they should be good to start their regular Premier League starters every single match. Andy Robertson, another player that we could well, have a look at as well. He's obviously a lot more expensive. He's getting into that premium price range for defenders. He's probably my favorite Liverpool defensive asset if we were to look to go for a play with a double in 25. And as you can see here, all these three replacements do double in 25. That's the main thing that I wanted to target. And and as you can see also, the main strategy that we're looking to go for is a dead end in to game week 28, which I will speak a bit uh, about in the uh, later on in the video. But Robertson, another option that we could go for here, he is currently out of a price range by 0.2 million, so we'd have to make another transfer to make this move possible which definitely doesn't make it as tempting. And also, Robertson's uh, defense hasn't been so good, or Liverpool's defense, sorry, hasn't been the best this season, only with Robertson recording three clean sheets. And I think for a player of nearly 7 million, you need to have that defensive solidarity. And despite having five assists so far, which is definitely a very, very good output, plus having a decent XA of 2.73, the main uh, thing I want Robertson to be able to produce is clean sheet points. He does have good fixtures as well, as despite having Newcastle away in gaming 24, he doubles in 24, plus faces a few promoted sides as well from 25 onwards so another player worthwhile considering if we had the funds to bring him in straight away at 6.0 then maybe I could have a stronger case for him but I'm still leading towards Max Kilman at much cheaper and then looking at Tarkovsky as well, another player at a very similar price to Kilman at just 4.2 here. He's also got a very low ownership of under 2% right now. The main thing I'm looking for Everton to improve is their defensive solidarity. And under Sean Dyche in their first game, did look very good against Arsenal. They are playing Liverpool uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to be interested to see how this defense holds up against Liverpool. Plus, I probably won't bring him in for 24, but Leeds at home is another good chance for Everton to prove themselves as a good defensive outfit. And then maybe be if we wanted to go Tarkovsky and for Martinez in 25 when uh, Manchester United do have their blank that could potentially be an option if Everton do improve their defensive form 
But still, I must say, I do prefer Max Kilman as I think he's a lot more startable than the other two in Game Week 24. So he definitely has the best fixture with Bournemouth at home compared to Robertson and Tarkovsky with Newcastle and Leeds, respectively. So right now, if we bring in Max Kilman into the team, we're pretty much set for blank Game Week 25 in that we only have Fernandez, Rashford, and Trippier being our blankers in Game Week 25. So we can drop those three players to the bench and have a full starting 11 without having to take any hits. But then coming into Game Week 28, there's a high chance of Manchester United and Manchester City blanking. So that is six players right there currently in the team. If we don't get rid of Martinez, five if we do get rid of Martinez, plus a bunch of other players as well with a decent chance of blanking. I did check it before based on Brendan uh, Krellin's uh, percentage chances of teams blanking and whatnot. Assuming that all the teams that have a decent chance of blanking do blank, we could have up to 10 players in the current squad blanking in Game Week 28, which of course will mean the good strategy will just to be dead-ended to Game Week 28, hit the free hit button for that week. The other good thing is as well, if we if we do set up the free hit in Game Week 28, is that we can look to bring in players with doubles in Game Week 27. So potentially Ivan Tony could be a good pick as well, as he's got a good chance of blanking in Game Week 28 despite having a double in 27. So we target double Game Week 27, getting in Ivan Tony and potentially a Brighton asset as well as they double in 27. Whether we want to get back in March or back in Matoma, that could be another option as well. Brighton are a good chance of blanking in 28 there, and then it was free hit in 28. And the good thing is most people with good fixtures from now to up until game week 27 and uh, also blank in 28 have good fixtures for the rest of the season so we don't have to worry too much about having to use a free hit or wild card later on in the season after we free hit in game week 28 as most of the teams do have a good fixture schedule from Game Week 27 until the rest of the season. So that is definitely an option that I'm willing to pursue. We have also used our wildcard already. So that is something that we'd probably be looking uh, to... Uh, or take into consideration as well is that we only have the free hit left really to try and navigate the blanks and doubles and considering that game week 28 is the biggest uh, blank game week I'm keen to use the free hit that week and as the team uh, progresses across the next few weeks it should be pretty well set up for the remainder of the season and then of course we can use bench boost and a various uh, triple captain as well in the remaining double game weeks which looks to be pretty big double game weeks for the remainder of the season so overall pretty well with how the team is uh, pretty happy sorry that the team is shaping up across the next few game weeks. Thanks for watching today's transfer plans for game week 24. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, drop a like and subscribe. It really does help me out, push the, woody, uh, push the video out to more people and does support the channel quite a bit. And if you do want to stay up to date with all of the past and future FPL videos coming your guys' way, click that notification bell as you will never miss a future upload. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.